All right, we only have three muscles of the back and the neck. The first one is erector spiny. And I actually have in your lab a note to do uh, the attachments of erector spiny, but no, we're not going to do that. Erector spiny lines the vertebral column, and it attaches in various places. There's actually three of them. We're cool. It's, if you see a big, long muscle that lines the vertebral vertebrae, the spines of the vertebrae, then you know that that is erector spiny. Um, it is actually innervated by many different spinal nerves. So our spinal nerves carry the same names as our um, specific vertebrae. So there, there's a whole slew of nerves that innervate erector spiny. And if you think about erector spiny contracting along this fiber um, direction, you can imagine it contracting like this, and if it shortens, you're actually going to extend. You're going to extend your thorax. You're going to extend your body at your, you're going to extend your vertebrae because there's a whole heckin' bunch of joints all the way through here that are affected by erector spiny. In the notes, I say to know the attachments in your lab, but you don't have to. The, the attachments, you're good. All right, so then there are two neck muscles that we're going to know, and one's on the front mostly and one's on the back mostly. So let's look at the one on the back since we're right here. The one on the back is called splenius, and you can see that there's actually two parts of splenius. Splenius is cool. I think we have a decent view of this actually in Myra's neck if we're brave enough to flip her over and take a look. Now, um, splenius actually attaches up here to the occipital bone, and it attaches to the mastoid process of the temporal bone. Should we go look at that skull again that I had up here? Look, here, here's, you can see it barely tiny. That, actually, you can probably feel your mastoid process better than any other way of getting it or visualizing it. So can you feel that bump here? It's like behind your ear, and it's a big old bump. And that bump attaches, that bump and parts of your occipital bone attach splenius. Splenius likes to get massaged. My splenius likes to get massaged. So keep that in mind, especially as we get closer to exams and quizzes. Um, so cool, splenius makes sense. Now, now look at the fiber direction, and then, I don't know, I feel like if you can identify where the muscle is, I don't even know if you need to memorize the attachments and the actions. It's almost like looking at the muscle you can figure out the attachments and the actions. So when I look, if I'm going to try and figure out the action of splenius, I'm actually going to put my fingers on the attachments. One of my attachments I already told you was the mastoid process and the occipital bone, and that you can see that. The other one is a structure called ligamentum nuci, which is basically a big old giant ligament that spans the spines of your cervical vertebrae. And I think that's why you can't really feel the individual spines as well on your cervical vertebrae because it, there's that big old ligament going down between them. But that ligament serves as an attachment for splenius. So put your hands up there. Attach low to the ligament and high to mastoid and occipital bone and then contract. And can you visualize how if there's two of them, one on each side, and if my left one contracts, then I'm actually going to turn my head to the same side. So I'm actually going to rotate my head at the same side as the muscle that's contracting. And so the same thing would go on the other side. I can turn my head to the same side. I rotate to the same side. Now, if both of them contract, look at how that's different. If both of them contract, I actually extend. 
at the neck. So that is, um, when you have paired muscles like that, sometimes you have to distinguish between are we just moving one or are we contracting both of them to get a movement because the movements are different. Same with our next muscle, which is sternocleidomastoid. And to see that one, we're going to go up here. Now you might be thinking, holy bad word, what, sternocleidomastoid? But remember it. Write it down like 50,000 times. I like it, so it will probably be on every quiz and exam that you have. You can see it. It's one of our really nice um, surface anatomy orientations, sternocleidomastoid. So sterno, guess where it attaches? To the manubrium of the sternum. Clido, clido actually refers to clavicle. So it actually attaches to the sternum and to the clavicle, the sternal side of the clavicle. Sternoclidomastoid. So who else is it going to attach to? What, what? The mastoid process of our temporal bone, which I just drew right there. So who's this guy right here? That's sternocleidomastoid. Sternocleidomastoid is deep to platysma. So if you have an intact platysma, you're actually not going to be able to see sternocleidomastoid. But if you can peel it back and go deep to platysma, you can see sternocleidomastoid. If you look carefully here, if this is my mastoid process, check it out. Who's this one? Right there. Spinius. Exactly. All right. Did I do everything? Oh, no. <clears throat> Sternocleidomastoid is innervated by cranial nerve 11, which is the accessory nerve. And splenius, did I already tell you that it's innervated by cervical spinal nerves? I don't think I told you that. All right, oh, let's talk about the action of sternocleidomastoid. If you contract one side, you're going to get lateral flexion to the same side as the muscle is contracting and you get a little bit of rotation to the opposite direction. So if my left sternocleidomastoid contracts all by itself, then I'm going to get lateral flexion and a slight rotation to my right. If the right side contracts, then I'm going to get the opposite motion to the other, other direction. And if they both contract, what do we get? Extension, no, flexion, it's flexion. Flexion of the head, neck. Flexion of your neck, neck flexion. Doesn't your neck flex all the time? Mine does. All right, that's it. One more round of axial musculature and we can move onward.